here today in JFK Arboretum to look at the options we have for the future in planning for our future management after clear fells or continuous cover forestry and what species we can consider. I love this place, this, this really is one of the birthplaces of forestry. You can walk across North America in the space of 20 minutes here. We have 623 acres here, uh, 252 hectares of, of arboretum and forestry plots. There's about 110 hectares of uh, forestry plots and that's probably what makes us a little bit distinctive than, than a lot of other arboretums. It's just a, an arboretum which is a, a plant collection of trees and shrubs. But we've got both here which makes us a lot different than a lot of other arboretums around the world. I was here four years ago and gave a presentation and I believe it was that good they've asked me back again four years later. But as you say, one of the biggest areas for accidents in this country is on the farm. And one of the biggest causes of accidents is chainsaws. I have a great saying for a chainsaw. I was told this many, many years ago when I first traveled to Sweden, is that the chainsaw is a fantastic servant, but a dreadful master. At the end of the day, we're growing commercial forestry. You're you know, it's all about producing soil out. Um, you know, all, all your, your biomass products, they do come kind of after, you know, in terms of uh, brash removal, uh, pulp wood, uh, all that. But I suppose the main the main thing for the grower to do to achieve a good return at the end is to produce high high percentage of soil out and uh, good products of pallet. There's been constant research into them different trees and which ones were best grown, how we ended up with the species that we grow now. Through having these places like JFK that we can see the potential for different trees and even within one species, the potential within, within that for meeting the challenges that we face now. One of the first jobs I had to do was uh, plan out the Berberus collection and we're moving Berberus which is a, a prickly job at the best of times but uh, what struck me was the the icy wind coming down from Scotland down the Irish Sea and cutting the corner above Ross Lair and going right across below our lake so wind has always been the limiting factor here. I always like talking to farmers seeing what their issues are listen to their good points and bad points and like we have a, a very varied sector, so there's no question about it, with lots of owners, with lots of different issues. And it's good to see them saying what their experiences are. Because even though there might be a lot of controversies in forestry over recent years, I think by and large it has been a positive experience for, for growers out there as they're now approaching uh, the more mature stages of plantations, which has to be looked at. You know, and it's an exciting time. We're going to take them to see some uh, well, western hemlock is, is, is reasonably common tree, but it's not grown probably enough in Ireland. But um, then you have the coast redwood, which is really good tree, grows well here. And then you have the, the um, uh, cupressus uh, macrocarpa there, the, the Monterey cypress. So there are a lot of uh, actually uh, west coast American trees actually, but they all seem to grow very well in the Irish climate. You know, one thing about forestry, sometimes it's like money in the bank that um, I, I knew uh, someone, um, I was at a Chagas day there one time and he said, uh, Forrest only said, one thing he said, when the farm home was bad, he said, I always knew that we could keep the ship afloat because all I had to do is, you know, fell some of my trees and, and keep the, you know, income rolling in when, when things were bad. And that's the thing, it's money in the bank forestry and, you know, that's why I encourage people to, to get into it, that they have an asset there when someday they may not have to realise their asset and liquidate it, you know. In the forest plots, you have a geogra geographical uh, layout and where it's un where fairly unique is that you, you can study, if you come here, you can study open grown specimens and then go and see how these are doing, if, if they're a tree species, you can see how they're growing in forest conditions. The range of plots actually, uh, range, they range in size from uh, 0.1 of a hectare up to 0.4, uh, now the old acre, and yes. these are squares, we have permanent sample plots in them, so we, we can measure, we used to measure these every five years, you know, for the first 21 years. We also used to measure every plant in the collection 
every five years, up to 21 years. At the end of the day, our our main main species is the is the the spruce, the sitka, and and uh, Norway. But it's great to have all these plots here, just to show as a, as an alternative if anything if anything needs to be adjusted. It's very positive to have forestry stakeholders here as well, so from the commercial side everybody learns a little bit on a day like today, so it's really interesting and it's good to see the positivity coming from forest owners and they want to take control of their sites and manage them going forward. The starters have finally come back in again, so there's a lot of positivity. Um, we're holding on for the new forestry programme, so there's some schemes and things we're holding on, half on. We have afforestation sites we're holding back on until that comes through. Probably even before the knowledge transfer group started, they were, you know, they were going to more Chagas timber talks, they were talking with other wood producers and people growing timber and that kind of stuff and you know speaking to their foresters and going to different events and joining groups like Pro Silva and you know there's one for agroforestry there now as well and it's very encouraging because people are getting more connected with the forest the more you engage with the forest you're more one you'll enjoy it but number two then is you know how you manage it and how you best manage it for what meets you whether you know you can be growing your timber for economic reasons for social reasons, you know, whether you like to have people come in and look at your forest or environmental reasons. And these are different reasons why people engage. But it's great that people are getting involved in producer groups and, and you know, Chagas Timber Talks. They've all missed it. I mean, we've been on Zoom for the last two years. <laughs> and, you know, just tic tac meet people. I mean, today I've met people I haven't seen for probably three years, four years. Right. And, you know, I said, is this such and such or that's such and such? And, you know, it's not all about trees. But <laughs> <laughs> it's the social aspect to it is major because you do, you get to see where your forest could be, but also to meet other people and, and talk timber and talk forests and trees. And it's a great, that's, look, that's part of the reason why I'm here. I like forestry, I like timber, and I like to talk to people about it too. It's half the fun. <laughs>